improving your relationship with God. God, our parents, and perfectionism. Sometimes we mix what is imperfect with the perfect without even realizing it. By thinking our relationship with God is like the relationship we've had with our uh, father, our parent. We think that in order to please God um, and make him happy, we need to accomplish things for him instead of relying on his accomplished work to guide our lives and our souls, which are our heart and minds. We try to earn our way to heaven so he'll love us, accept us, give us attention, praise, just like our earthly parents did. But God already loves us. And he already accepts us, regardless of how imperfect or perfect we are. And it doesn't matter if you read Matthew 5, 19, you realize that at the end, both examples get to go to heaven. Regardless of how perfectly that person followed the, the law or not. Remember back when you first believed, the tears rolled down the your face, the heartache you felt, your, um, your emotions were replaced with joy and wonder and awe and love for God. You had everything you wanted and everything you needed right at that moment when you first started following and believing in Jesus. The gospel or the story of Jesus is what saved you then and continues to save you now. And it continues to keep you right with God, believing in it, and uh, allows you to have this amazing connection with God, the Holy Spirit. And because we are his children, God has sent his spirits into our hearts, prompting us to call out, Abba, Father. Abba, it, it's equivalent to saying, Daddy. It, so view God as your perfect father your brother, your friend, all these relational uh, words that we see in Scripture. Jesus' example, Abba, Father, he cried out, everything is possible for you. Please take this cup of suffering away from me, but not my will, your will be done. When we focus on constantly striving and becoming to become perfect, instead of focusing on the only perfect person who ever lived, our perfectionism slowly hurts us more and more. We will naturally, unwillingly, um, or just flat out be pulled away by spiritual forces from the amazing grace, love, um, relationship we have with God that he wants us to have with him. But when we stay focused on Jesus and his truths, he renews our minds and our hearts and guides them home to life and to freedom um, from destroying ourselves with our own perfectionistic burdens. Uh, perfectionism's effects in your other relationships. This is also known as uh, legalistic thinking, which means that we relate to others based on what they do. N instead of who they are in Christ, or what, uh, how Jesus views them as unbelievers, and what he did with unbelievers. Examples, you align yourselves with others at church that will benefit you the most, you are most comfortable around, or that are perhaps on your same financial level, or live up to whatever high perfectionist standards you have set, or at least until you get to know them a little better and realize they do not. And uh, when they don't, you distance yourself from them, uh, you're just cold or unwelcoming towards them, or I've even experienced some Christians being downright harsh, uh, judgmental, uh, mocking, scoffing, etc., as it talks about in, what is it, Psalm 1? Basically, this is a graceless, un-Christ, Jesus-like way of treating others and keeping your relationship with Jesus strong 
will help you uh, and keep you from doing this. Therefore, in order to keep me from being conceited, I was given a thorn in the flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. This was something that Paul uh, wanted uh, pleaded to be taken away from him because um, it made him weak uh, and, and he begged God but God uh, wouldn't take it away from him even though taking it away from him would seemingly make him more perfect right what God uh, wanted uh, him to realize and us to realize that uh, God's power works best in our weakness. In our weakness, God wants you to rely on him more, to lean on him more, to stay focused on him more, to dwell, to remain, to abide in him more, which he covers in John 15 and 17, the entire chapters. Uh, Paul finally began to realize when he said, now that I boast all the more about my weaknesses so that Christ's power uh, may work through me, that this was all done for uh, God's glory and we weren't meant to live this life without God. We were meant to live with him closely in a close relationship so that the Holy Spirit, the great helper, also talked about in uh, somewhere between John 15 and 17 um, will help us and, and guide us through our lives, guide us back home to heaven and help us here now on earth. God the Holy Spirit wants to uh, be with us every day, every second on our lives here on earth so that um, uh, we know how much God loves us and cares for us and wants to help us and how much we need to rely on him so we don't hurt ourselves with our perfectionistic thinking or the things that causes us to do. Uh, that's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in insults, hardships, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Jesus wants us to come near to him. This thorn in the flesh is supposed to be a reminder of how much we need him. And how sweet it is to be with him. So let your perfectionist, perfectionistic thorn do that. Jesus is in the business of using our imperfectness to display his perfectness. This is from Keith Baring. We often uh, reflect on our goals as perfectionists. So we tend to forget how imperfect a lot of the early church leaders were and only focus on the great things they did. For example, Peter was the rock. Uh, John was the one that Jesus loved. Paul was the greatest missionary that ever lived. But remember, uh, when they saw, the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees saw the courage of Peter and John and they realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men. Unlike them, they were astonished. And they took note that these men had been with Jesus. It wasn't the fact that they had a noble birth, that they went to the best schools, that they had the best knowledge or the best training. The only thing notable about them was they had spent time with Jesus. So spending time with Jesus allows us to do incredible things because then he can work through us because he needs us to uh, stay close to him so we can do things the right way 
his way and and rely on him and so he could get the glory and the credit for it all so being with jesus is what makes us great and what makes us accomplish these great things for god so go to god's word to be with jesus to hang out with him to get to know him better and to grow in your relationship with him let the sweetness um, the wonder and the awe of, of what Jesus did for us, dying for us, suffering for us, conquering death for us, constantly praying for us. Let all he has done and is continuing to do continue to uh, work in your heart and deepen your love for him and others in this world. Jesus said, come to me all who are weary and heavy burdened and I will give you rest. He wants to do this. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls, your heart and your mind. For my yoke is easy to bear, and my burden I give you is light. Some of us have learned wrong things from God or other leaders of God and therefore have experienced a heavy burden and a weary. Or you might be uh, misinterpreting things of God that are putting a heavy burden on yourself because of the way your perfectionistic brain naturally thinks. They crush people um, with unbearable religious demands and never lift a finger to ease their burden. You are most likely crushing yourself and never lifting a finger to ease your perfectionistic uh, thinking. Jesus, the great thing about Jesus though is that he is a burden replacer. He takes away the heavy ones that have worn you out and left you so weary and replaces it with a light burden that you can feel it feels so wonderful and i love it when he does it and i need to keep coming back to him more so he can do it with my perfectionistic burdens draw near to god and he will draw near to you if you want a faster easier more convenient way to apply what you learned in this video or any of the other perfectionistic videos click on the first link if you're on youtube it's the first comment on the, the first link in the first comment will take you to the course that this and all the other videos about perfectionism came from. Uh, it's all about applying what you've learned here. There's other videos as well, but the videos I put on YouTube is the core. Uh, the second link is a Patreon link if you'd like to support us. Only uh, shiny, only seven dollars, a shiny seven dollars a month will uh, help you not have to imagine a world without these I love shiny object.com videos and seven grand gets you or your business in one of these videos. So why do we do this shiny stuff is to help you work smarter and faster so that you can have more time in your life with those shiny objects you truly love. Our goal for you is not necessarily more money, promotions or praise, although these courses and videos will help you get those things. Our goal for you is to get lost in the shiny objects that bring you joy and meaning in life. And hopefully those shiny objects will leave a great impact on this world when you are gone. So no more feeling bad or being hard on yourself for getting distracted. I dare you to be different. I challenge you every week to devote just a little more time to working a little smarter and more efficiently so that you can have a little more time to devote to those shiny objects you truly love. Have a shiny month, souls. If you think you'll forget the next shiny seventh video, it come out at the seventh of every month. Um, hit the bell of, is it the subscribe button and the bell icon and you'll automatically be notified when it comes out. Or you can go to the website and there's a bell icon on the bottom right hand corner and that will also send you a reminder of when the new video comes out. Uh, thank you so much. It was a pleasure helping you guys, and I hope this video has blessed you. Bye.